everyone. Welcome to Wingman's Hangar, episode 20. Yep, we're actually all the way to 20. We're still chugging along. Listen, a big shout out to all the new pledgers who've joined, all the new subscribers. Thanks a lot for joining the team, joining the cause. If you're on the fence and you joined us by now, man, big ups. Big, big ups for joining us now. The Aurora promotion really, really helped us kind of bring some of you more into the fold. Really appreciate it. Um, we want to ask you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Get on the channel. If you happen to miss a comm link, we still post all the videos on YouTube, and you can keep track of what's going on in Star Citizen, at least video-wise, through the YouTube channel. And if you really want to have a good time, I suggest you join the chat roll on the RSI site and get with the other peeps that are in the community and watch Wingman's Hangar live and comment, laugh, guffaw, and roll your eyes because pretty much that's what everybody does when they watch. All right, we got a really good show this week. We got the weekend review. We got forum feedback with, of course, your videos. And I got to say, this might be the best video week ever. We have wide world news, tidbits from this world at large. And we got our own John Erskine. We're going to introduce you to one of our new execs here at the company. Uh, he's helping out a lot with the creation of the website, QA, customer service. So you're going to meet John. Really, really good guy. A really, really good veteran guy. So let's get on with it. On to the week in review. Again, big thanks for the Aurora promotion. You guys all came through in flying colors. It was really amazing, the amount of people that came on and, and uh, joined the crew and joined the crowd, and, and the pledges just went up through the roof. You helped us get lifetime insurance for everybody that, to this point. What a wonderful thing. You know, now we're marching on to MoCap Studio. Oh, man, I cannot tell you how important it is to get a MoCap Studio. Being able to do full performance capture, being able to get motions, Together, we don't have to go down and spend like a million dollars on somebody else's bit. We can spend a couple hundred thousand and have access to our own motion capture studio. It's a big savings for all of us. I know it's kind of strange. Seems like it's not a savings, but it's a massive savings in the end. So let's charge on to that. We also have a new segment this week, Meet the Moderator. But before we get to that, two new people joined the team this week. Ron LaJoy, a project manager, he's going to help us manage the project. See how I did that? Kind of works all together. And then we also have Justin Benford. He's a new CS and QA person. He's going to be probably coming on the show in a little bit, introducing himself. If you have any issues and stuff, you'll be meeting him. But with the Hangar module coming up he's and, and the website where we're going to use you guys to help test things, he's going to be the one wrangling all that from our end and you know talking and interfacing directly with you. So again, let's get to meet a moderator, a new segment. Ta-da! <laughs> All right, that's kind of modeled a little bit. That graphics modeled after kind of the new website. That's a little sneak peek. So I want to introduce you, everybody. Hey, everybody, it's Toast. Hi, Toast. Hey, how are you, everybody? This is Toast. So uh, we've met before, right? Yeah, we have. Um, everybody, I got a chance to meet some of uh, some of CIG over at the GDC in San Francisco when they came over here. Um, and so Eric, Wingman, and Rob, Design Epotamus, had a little dinner meetup with me in Idolonius at a little Italian restaurant. Uh, we had pizza and pasta and meatballs. And before anybody jumps on Eric for the sound of all of those carbs, he was very good about his diet. I did, I did, but I had a little wine too. And when we met there, we talked a little bit about you becoming a moderator because it's a tough job. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, sure. It's not actually as hard as one might think. It can be a really hard job. I've talked to other people about their experiences moderating other game forums and um, I'm actually quite new to this. I've been doing it since January. I have not moderated other game boards and I feel like I've gotten really lucky because we do have a very good community. It, we are a little more mature on average than most. Um, some of the other people I've talked to about moderating other boards say, oh my god, it's, it's soul draining. It's so hard. It's so much work. I need therapy afterwards. Uh, don't you? And I said, no, actually, it's, it's it's really good. I spend more time helping people than banning people. You know, that's because we have such an amazing community. But what brought you to Star Citizen, and what are you looking forward to doing? I think literally what brought me to Star Citizen was uh, the WingCommanderNews.com site that Ben used to work on. Very literally, that's where I heard of it. Um, but Wing Commander was one of my favorite games of all time when I was young. And it was one of my favorites back then because it just had all sorts of things that I'd already been interested in. It had allusions to World War II history and the War in the Pacific, you know, carrier battles, um, you know, who doesn't like sci-fi, uh, but it also had a dynamic soundtrack and really cool graphics. It was, uh, you know, as, as Chris says, it's very immersive. Um, I suppose I could go on about it forever. Yeah, you know, that is true. If you kind of think about it, Squadron 42 is, is the new Wing Commander, and uh, Star Citizen is more like Privateer, only much more massive. That's the potential there, because, um, I mean, 
for me, uh, hearing about Star Citizen was almost like seeing you know Chris Roberts' old properties grow up, and I didn't see them for twenty years. And you know, I'm I'm older and more sophisticated and more knowledgeable, and I have more experiences now just as a person. And it's like running into that old friend and realizing they've changed just as much, but for the better. Yeah, you know what? We we have developers have grown up too, uh, sorta. Well, everybody, nice to meet Toast. Thanks a lot, Toast. Sure, real pleasure. Be seeing you soon. See you where? In the verse. That's right, Toast. You will see me in the verse. But exactly how much of me are we going to see in the verse? Let's take a look at Wingman's weight. I started out at 236 beautiful pounds. Yeah, too many, I know. Last week, I made it all the way down to... 219! Where am I this week? Yeah, still at 219. It, but you know, I'm trying to still lose inches. I haven't, I guess I plateaued. Maybe it's time for me to actually exercise. I, I know, exercise, really? I exercise the keyboard every day. Isn't that enough? Stella! Anyway, let's look at the, this week's fan gift from a samurai hel helmet from Joe Yamanaka. <laughs> Dear Chris and everyone at Star Citizen, thought everyone might enjoy a little Japanese culture, so instead of beer and bagels, I sent this traditional Japanese display for the home or office. It is a samurai helmet, and I couldn't think of anything better to represent them. Never surrender, never give up spirit to reignite PC game. Best regards, Joe Yamanaka. I think Yamanaka. Yamanaka. There you go. Box. Box. And. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're very, very small heads. Very cool. Amazing. I mean, seriously, you fans are the best. Thanks a lot, Joe. Um, now it's time for one of our favorite. Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you. Check in on yesterday's post. We're, we're streamlining support on the comlink. So check in on Thursday's comlink. Read about some of the changes we made in emailing so that we, we can provide better support for you guys. But you know after that, what the, what does that mean? Da -da -da, da -da -da. Forum f f f f f feedback. I know you guys missed that last week. So Forum feedback. That's right. Let's just get right to it. From Raman0503, he says, It's extremely satisfying seeing comlink polls. I wonder how much the results influence your decisions as developers and whether you're sometimes surprised by the popularity of certain responses. Well, we take polls very seriously. Um, just look at that handle system poll. We thought we had a really, really good way of doing it and we put it out there to you guys, want to get your opinions. And you guys came up with some incredibly cool ideas and we're like, yeah, you know, that actually works better. So we value your input very much. Um, we think we pull the community on a lot of the very important things in the game. We think it's crucial. Are we surprised? Not really, because you guys are incredible, and we expect that out of you. A lot of expected out of you fans. From Myrothus, he says... Hey, Wingman. Will we be able to fully script things and servers? I could imagine someone creating a real-life server with jobs and much functions for roleplay on planets. You know, on your own server, you can do whatever you want. You can script fully script events, things of that nature. You won't be able to put them up into the verse, at least onto our servers, unless they've been approved and run through our QA group. But yeah, I mean, on your own servers, it's, you know, it's kind of like running your own MMO, essentially. Oop! Your own community game! Or MMO! Whatever you want to call it. From Lord Atrix, he says, If you reach 10 million before the new website goes live, will you still be doing a 24-hour live show? Huh! What? Of course we're going to do a 24-hour show. We're excited about it. It's incredible. It's not always about raising money. It's more about involving the team. It's interacting directly with you guys. It's getting you involved in the process. We're going to have we're going to have some stuff from you on the show. It really is, but we're kind of making this game together, and so it's fun to reach out and virtually handshake, you know, at certain times. And 24-hour webcasts, webcasts are fun. So you know what? Yeah, we're going to do it. We're excited. It's a good way to blow off a little steam. Oh, you guys are going to like this. From McQueen Gandalfnog, he says... Preston, full impulse. Oh, turn on the radiators. Mahora, open up the frequency with Wingman's hangar and uh, put it on screen. Hey, 
Hey everybody, Eric Wingman Peterson. McQueen here, captain of the USS Wolfspite. And today, I come to you with a question. During battle, when your ship is tossing and turning and doing barrel rolls, can you and your friends in arms walk about the ship and partake in other activities? Uh, for example, could you and your friends make some tea during a battle? Good day, sir. The Queen out. The Queen, it's a very important job keeping the war spite on the straight and narrow. To answer your question, um, you are going to be able to move around your ship during a battle and while it's being jostled. I'm not sure how much of the, you know, the gravity will affect, you know, how much the anti, the, being able to like bounce off walls and stuff will happen. That's kind of going to be determined in gameplay. We'll put that through the paces in, uh, in the um, dogfighting app. We'll let you guys have some feedback. Talk to us what you liked, what you didn't like. But I'll tell you what, if you're up walking around your ship and you're supposed to be manning a gun, that's not good for the ship or the rest of your crew. Get back to your station, soldier, now! Great video, by the way. From Quorum OF4. Does the Aurora have a bathroom? The public makes irrational demands for answers. To pee or not to pee? That is the question. You know, you don't need a bathroom in the Aurora. Why do you think we gave you this really fancy spacesuit? Just go in there. Yes. From Atomic Hawk, has the dev team considered if and how they're going to implement salvaging? There certainly will be salvaging. Uh, there'll be derelict ships in the universe for you to discover and loot. Also, we're still trying to figure out exactly how what's going to be left behind. You know, when ships blow up, if you've blown up your enemy, uh, they might leave something really, really cool behind. It probably won't be completely intact, but you'll be able to salvage it, you know, because the game is one of skill. So you should be able to destroy something really cool and get something. So, um, again, that's one of those things that we'll have to balance together. Um, from Razor Xerex, she says... Hi, Wingman. Have you officially confirmed the lamp as an in-game feature? I remember a handsome guy say this. We're putting that lamp in the game now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got to go in the game. It's, it's going to go in the car. It's part of the lore. That was amazing. Loved going back to the 24-hour thing, which is coming up. But, you know, to answer your question, will the lamp be in the game? Why don't, why don't we just ask the lamp? Hi, lamp. Hi, Eric. Are you going to be in the game? I'd love to be in the game. I will light the way for all citizens. Exactly. From Ravenhurst, he says, Is the SAR Citizen team changing, customizing certain aspects of CryEngine, or does it work out of the box for everything that is planned for the game? You know, while the CryEngine is very impressive, it was designed mostly for a first-person shooter. So we're doing a significant amount of customization for Star Citizen because we have a m bigger universe, as you know. We have a lot more places to go. So, if, you know, and you would have to do that with any engine. You're going to have to customize for your particular game. So, yes, customization is definitely going on. And we're lucky to have the support of the CryTech team as we do this. Incredibly important. From Legante. Oh. What's up, wingman? A little tuffle last time, as you see. Close call, but uh, nothing to keep, can't fix. Good thing I have to. Anyway, I'm to fix up my gear here. I did quite the beating. Speaking of beating, though, when it comes to, like, repairing ships and gear and stuff like that, I was curious about Oh, by the way, is over the hill there? There's a ship. Yeah, ship. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna be going over there to check it out. Anyway, are you able to like hire someone else to be in charge of you know fixing up your ship or improving it? And, you know, like an engineer or a shop mechanic, you know, someone make a living off of that, fix some stuff up. Anyway, for the Legante, sign it off. I can get my gear and check out what that ship is. Well, as you know, in the campaign, there is a repair bot that already works on your ship. But I think what you're asking is. Can you have somebody that you hire that runs around repairing or tweaking your ship as, as a career? You know, we've been toying with that idea uh, of allowing people to, to take things, modify them, and then resell them in the community. I know that Chris is keen on that, and I think that we've talked about that. It's going to be a balancing aspect, how we work it in. So uh, that's going to be one of those things that's TBD, but I think it is something that is really cool and makes a lot of sense to happen if we can get it right so yeah thanks a lot for your videos um and it, the videos this week were extremely creative i really appreciate it and now it's time for Brittany for this week's most valuable post
Thanks, Eric. Keeping track of every stretch goal and reward offered to Star Citizen backers is a huge task. Sometimes we even have trouble keeping it up ourselves. So we are very grateful to Gregor H. for taking the time to create a spreadsheet of every stretch goal that we've achieved and one that's even in our crosshairs. So check out his list on the RSI forum. Thank you, Gregor H. You've made the most valuable posts. Back to you, Eric. Thanks, Brittany. And you know what time it is? It's time for Wide World News. NASA is making its first bold steps. We're going to mine asteroids for natural resources. And we're going to do that by getting a sample from this asteroid and bringing it back to Earth for detailed analysis. A public presentation at NASA headquarters provided an overview of OSIRIS-REx, a NASA mission that will send a robotic probe to an asteroid in September 2016 to collect and return a sample of that asteroid to Earth. In the presentation, Asteroids Coming to Earth, Principal Investigator Dr. Dante Loretta discussed the mission. Asteroids represent a great opportunity. These are resources in near-Earth space. We're talking about water, organic material, precious metals that we're going to need if we're serious about expanding the human presence beyond the Earth-Moon system. Previously known as 1999 RQ-36, the target asteroid's new name, submitted by a North Carolina third grader to an international naming contest, is Bennu a mythological Egyptian bird. OSIRIS-REx is managed by Goddard Space Flight Center in collaboration with the University of Arizona and Lockheed Martin. NASA has launched several missions to study asteroids since the year 2000, including near Shoemaker, the first spacecraft to touch down on an asteroid. While Shoemaker remains stranded on the rock, the Bennu mission will be the first to return to Earth with, a, with an asteroid sample. Bennu! Bennu! Who knew? And now a look back at This Week in Space. On May 5th, 1961, astronaut Alan Shepard piloted the Freedom 7 mission and became the second person and first American to travel into space. Originally scheduled for October 1960, the launch of Shepard's Mercury spacecraft was delayed, giving the USSR and cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin the opportunity to reach space first. After a flight 300 miles downrange and a dramatic Atlantic Ocean recovery, Commander Shepard observed, it's not the fall that hurts, it's the sudden stop. Upon his return to Earth, Shepard was celebrated as a national hero, honored with parades, and received the NASA Distinguished Service Medal from President John F. Kennedy. Alan Shepard, America's first man in space. And closer to home, our own weekly weather wizard, Peter Mackey, is in New York City. How's the weather, Pete? Smoggy with the chance of gunshot wounds. Back to you, Eric. Uh, thanks, Peter. And that's your Wide World News. And now, it's time for an existential break with our own Mark Skelton. So is there ever a day when mattresses aren't on sale? That was beautiful. <laughs> now it's time for Sandy Gardner to interview our newest Cloud Imperium employee, John Erskine. He's joined us to help us with customer service QA and, well, let's let Sandy and John work it out. Hey everybody, I am here with John Erskine, Director of Studio Services. Hey John. Hey, how's it going? Good. Tell us what Director of Studio Services does at CIG. Well, I'm doing a variety of things right now. I'm working on the new website and the uh, e-commerce components that are going to be available on the new site that will allow people to manage their accounts and their pledges and do a lot of stuff that you can't do on the current site. Where were you working before here? Most recently I worked with Portalarium for the last three years. Okay. Tell us what games you do play. I play a lot of different games. Uh, most recently I've been playing some World of Tanks and some uh, different shooter games and um, so just a wide variety of things. But I like to play online games, multiplayer games. That's one of the things that I like about this game is that it's a very social experience. And what are you looking forward to in Star Citizen? 
I think there are so many cool things that we're doing around the community side of the game and things on the web and different components of the game about having, you know, being able to play pieces early. So there's a lot of things I'm excited about. Thank you very much, John Erskine, everybody. And here he is. How you doing, John? Hey, I'm great. How are you, Eric? I'm good. So you came to us from Port Alaria. That's right. Most recently I've been at Port Alaria. But you've, uh, you've got extensive MMO experience. I mean, you've done all kinds of games. You've run communities. So you were at NCSoft for how long? Nine years. Nine years. Mm -hmm. Isn't that about how long it took to do Tabula Rasa? <laughs> More or less. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just kidding. So how long have you been in the industry altogether? About 15 years. I started in 1998. 19, and you started at Origin Systems? At Origin Systems working on Ultima Online. Oh, you were on Ultima Online. Yes. Yeah, then you got there. Chris and I were at Digital Anvil by then. So yeah. we might we just missed each other at Origin, but not by too much. Just passed, yeah, briefly. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. So I understand that you uh, you do some sort of canoeing thing. I do. I like to race canoes. It's kind of an obscure sport, but people that are into it are really, really into it. And you've got something coming up down the... Are you going down... What's the one in San Marcos that goes down the river? or where's, what's, what's that all about? <clears throat> There's a race called the Texas Water Safari that starts in San Marcos, which is just south of Austin, Texas here. Mm -hmm. And you race... Where I went to college, by the way. There you go. Yeah. And you race all the way to the ocean. It's 265 miles from start to finish. Oh my gosh. There's probably no beer involved in any of that, is there? Not until you get to the finish line. Yeah, but there's a lot there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's all downriver, right? So It is downriver. It's the Colorado, is that correct? It's the San Marcos River and the Guadalupe River. Oh, you, oh, it's kind of chilly that river too, isn't it? Not not by the time you get down that far. It's kind of swampy by the time you get to the Guadalupe, but upstream on the Guadalupe is nice and it's, clear. It's beautiful. I love that thing. So, you're also you seem to be a water guy. You seem to also be a fisherman. You're right. I'm a water guy. I I really am into fly fishing as well. That's my other hobby. How do you catch flies while you're fishing? <laughs> you, <can> carry, <laughs> you got a little, a little net with a long pole. Yeah, well, that'll yeah. work. That's out of way. So yeah, fly tricky. fishing's really hard, though, isn't it? It It's kind of like golf, right? You can learn the basics really quickly, and mm -hmm. then you can spend the rest of your life trying to perfect it. That's cool. Is there a lot of fly fishing in Texas? There is. There's lots and lots. And that's how I got into canoe racing to begin with, is because I was always out fly fishing on the rivers, and then... One thing led to another, and you and the keep going sons of guns on canoes kept stirring up the water. That's kind of that's kind of exactly right. Yeah, actually. I'm bad. Yeah. You thought I'd better join them than complain about that. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Um, you're also an avid <clears throat> book reader. I do. I I read a lot. Uh, I uh, in in 2000 my uh, New Year's resolution was to read a book a week, and oh, I gosh. have done that ever since then. An entire book a week. Well, I don't. I don't necessarily always read one book every single week, but I read 52 in a year. And That's I, amazing. I keep a list of them, and I make sure that by the end of the year I've gotten through so, 52. So it helps that, like, the... We close down the week between Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> I'm so, cramming away, cramming away. So that away. you can go, yeah. The Hobbit, I can read that again. <laughs> that counts. You know, I absolutely. usually do have a couple of gimmies in there in the year, but I also read some big stuff, so I, I kind of, it kind of evens out. That's good, that's good. And you're going to be, you're kind of working right now on the website, right? So you have an insight into what they're going to be seeing coming up. What, yeah. do you, what do you think? you think they're going to like it? I think so. I think it's really cool. There's going to be... First of all, it's going to look really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Zane's doing some pretty cool stuff. The design work that Zane is doing is just out of this world, fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's so cool. It's mm -hmm. the probably the coolest thing I've I've seen, and it'll be really flexible, so you can look at it on your computer or your laptop or your tablet or your phone. You can interact with it. It's going to be really, really cool. Also, it's going to be a lot more functional. I mean, you're going to be able to really customize all of your pledges and outfit all of your your ships and buy stuff and gift stuff it's going to be really cool yeah and it's also you know one of the things right now you have like the com link and we put some pretty cool updates up and then they get pushed down to the bottom so we've had we have like 10 updates a week so mm -hmm. there's some cool stuff that gets lost in there now we're going to let you tag it we're going to tag it to where you can easily yep. search and find important things like death of a spaceman that chris did or something like that yeah, one of the features uh, on the content section of the new site is that you'll be able to see things as part of a series. So if you want to go and look at all the Wingman's Hangar shows, for instance. Well, and why would you do that? Why wouldn't you? you know? <laughs> why wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah, if you That'd name to, a lot of reasons yeah. for that. <laughs> well, maybe. You know, depending on your taste, you <laughs> okay, could do whatever enough, you like. You could go back and you could see all of them at once. They would all be tagged the same, just like good. you were saying. Or good, you good. could go back and you could look at all the Death of the Spaceman stories and you right. could see them all tagged at the same. So it's going to be really 
really a lot easier to find stuff and to sort stuff and it's just it's going to be good. That's good and that'll help a lot because we get a lot of new people in every day and they ask a lot of the same questions because you know they, they're new to the, the game and the new to the site and this will be a nice way for people to educate themselves and get into the game and, and people in the forums that are helpful can point their way and it'll be exactly. really, really cool. Yep. Alright so you got rid of all the TVs in your house? I don't have a TV. That ties in that, that sort of dovetails with my reading a book a week, right? So I have more time to read, and uh, we don't have any TVs in our house. So you're about to have a baby. That's right. We, we're well, having you, a baby. I mean, your wife time. is. My wife I mean, is going to have a baby. You're not physically going to have a baby. I'm just going to be there in the room, right. but she's having the baby. So right. how are you going to let them watch baby Mozart or something on video? <laughs> you know that a TV. Are you going to hook up the t computer screen? Or are you going to sit I, in the office? Or? I do have a tablet. I mean, it's, oh. not, it's not like I don't interact with <coughs> the enough. world, you know, but... Uh, you know, so uh, we've already got uh, an older uh, tablet that's got his name on it, so he'll he'll be interacting. And he gets with the older tablet. one, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Fair enough. It's a good reason to upgrade. <coughs> well, listen, I want to thank you for joining us. Yeah. Uh, it's gonna it's been a really fun show this week. Uh, thanks, John, for joining us. I really appreciate all the new uh, Aurora owners. Um, space is getting kind of crowded out there. Um, yeah. We want to thank our subscribers and pledgers again. Without you guys, we wouldn't have. Uh, a game we wouldn't have a company we wouldn't be able to do this really cool and fun stuff um coming up next week uh we're gonna have Brittany. Brittany's back she was promised this week but she got so busy with some stuff that she had to be pushed to next week it happens um <laughs> we also have an inside look at the hangar module oh i know That's right cool. can't wait for that it's really really neat um we're gonna show you some cool stuff in there and again why not join the YouTube channel? Find out. Subscribe. Yeah. Join us, man. Join the parade. That way you know whenever we post something up. Join us again in the chat roll live, or you can watch it in HD okay. right yeah. afterwards if you're not watching it live. And don't forget the after show. Oh, well, okay, wait, wait. The after show is Wingman's Hangover, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. But I'm not going to be there. Okay. You know why? Oh, are you out of town? Well, no, I'm, no, I'm in town. In I'm in town. town. But uh, it, we are having our seventh annual Hemmelfart. Oh, yeah. I think I've heard rumors about yes, that. Yes, yes. The Hemmelfart is, uh, we decided, it's a group of guys I play cards with, and we're just friends, lawyers, doctors, and other professionals, and we thought, you know, we'd spend a lot of time with our kids and wives, and <laughs> we love them, but we need a guy's day. And so one of our friends used to live in Germany, and he said that you should do a Hemmelfart. And we're like, what's that? Apparently, it's called Ascension Day, and it's a day when all the farmers bring their home brews into the city and share them with you know with just the guys no wives no girlfriends no kids allowed so tomorrow tomorrow while you guys are watching this i'll be golfing okay uh i'll be playing i'll be eating lunch i'll be eating salt lick barbecue Ooh, i'll good. be bowling good, good and then we end the night on a poker fest and here's the thing there is no showering <laughs> allowed <laughs> it's a complete sausage fest i mean oh, it's just nice. dudes and it's crazy so the hangover this week, you know, will be Ben. Ben's going to host that. Ben and Brittany will be there to answer your questions. You guys can talk to them. You can tell them how much you want to see uh, somebody else host the show or whatever you want to do. <laughs> Just come on. Actually, don't say that. Yeah. My job That's depends it. on you. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks again, John, for being here. Yeah, thanks for thank everybody you. out there. And see you in the verse.